Senators are livid after Finance Minister Christy Freeland asked the upper chamber to pass a budget they hadn't even read. This latest fiscal trap is yet another case of Trudeau and his spendthrift sidekick Freeland burning through billions of your hard-earned tax dollars on foolish liberal pet projects. Trudeau's grinning obliviously while Freeland jams massive unchecked spending bills down Parliament's neck. They're on a power trip, crushing any oversight that threatens their tax and spend party time. This pair rules like dictators, handing out billions like shady backroom dealers. Canada's future prosperity is held hostage by their fiscal arms race. How many more tax dollars will spend a haul like Trudeau and Freeland torch in a blaze of liberal waste? Canadians already owe a mountain of debt thanks to Trudeau's blank checkbook. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we jump into today's video, take a second to sign up for our exclusive uncensored newsletter. The mainstream media won't report Trudeau's scandals and corruption, but our newsletter delivers the raw truth to your inbox daily. We'll leave you the link in the description box. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. The Trudeau government has once again shown they love shady governing and screwing up money stuff. In a disturbing move, Finance Minister Christy Freeland recently pushed through billions in new spending without proper parliamentary oversight. This latest abuse of power has rightfully angered senators across party lines. Bill C-67 proposed massive new spending up to 2023-24, but it was rushed through the House in only eight minutes. Then the senators had just one hour to review the huge budget bill before they were forced to vote. As Senator Elizabeth Marshall, a former provincial auditor, astutely stated, you need the bill to vote on it. I haven't seen the bill. It's not posted. I don't know how we can vote on a bill that we haven't seen. This insane move let the Liberals hand out billions without proper oversight. The bill approved $3.2 billion for debt payments, $2.2 billion for the military, and $1.2 billion for Gov employee raises. Even worse, senators were pressured to approve another $8.9 billion in secret mystery spending that was never explained. Just how many more billions will Trudeau's crew recklessly blow through while avoiding any transparency? That's not how a responsible government works. Canadians deserve to know exactly how their leaders are spending their hard-earned cash. As Senator Donald Plett, the conservative opposition House leader, rightly argued, this is an embarrassment. I am being asked to vote on a bill I haven't seen. Passing huge budgets without looking at the details is like totally neglecting their job. No wonder the senators feel scammed. This sketchy situation is just like how the Liberals operated in the early COVID days. Back in March 2020, Parliament fast-tracked three massive budget bills that gave Trudeau almost total spending power for 90 days. At the time, the MPs were kept completely in the dark, only seeing the actual bill hours after it became law. This allowed Trudeau to hide how much he was spending on the pandemic response. The cabinet racked up a crazy $350 billion in debt by March 31, 2020, more than the inflation-adjusted cost of World War II. As Conservative MP Scott Reid presciently warned, panic is never, ever an excuse to override our ancient political conventions. These conventions are the oldest and best protections that exist for our political liberties. How right was he? Yet the Liberals have clearly learned nothing since their earlier gross misconduct. While Finance Minister Freeland pledged to limit this year's deficit of $40 billion, the actual budget shortfall has already ballooned to $25.7 billion. This despite tax revenues increasing by $10.5 billion. At the same time, program expenses surged by $21.2 billion and public debt charges grew by $10.3 billion. So much for the Liberals' hollow commitments to fiscal restraint. But do you really want to know where all this money is going? The Trudeau Liberals seem set on funneling it as sketchy pet projects instead of urgent stuff we need here at home. Case in point, Trudeau recently pledged $8.4 million to study so-called democratic decline and its relationship to climate change. He made this announcement at the recent summit on democracy in South Korea. This is basically dumping millions of dollars on a research paper that can solve the mystery of why Canadians find Trudeau so unlovable. This is yet another example of the PM wastefully spending our tax dollars to push his ideological agenda on the world stage. As Conservative MP Michelle Rempel Garner rightly argued, Study after study demonstrates Canadians are most concerned about inflation and the cost of living. What they don't want is more of their hard-earned tax dollars going towards this kind of spending. For real, regular Canadian families are hurting from crazy high prices at the supermarket and rent. But Trudeau looks set on redirecting their cash to his unrealistic climate missions overseas rather than helping Canadians here. Trudeau claims the $8.4 million will help understand how climate change interacts with democratic decline. But the experts have already dug deep into the link between climate change and declining democracy. 
This money splash is just political posing from a PM obsessed with how he looks to the world. As proof of his global leadership, Trudeau said in the summit's press conference, Today I'm announcing that Canada is investing $8.4 million on research across the global south to better understand how climate change interacts with democratic decline. But Canada already gives developing countries billions in foreign aid yearly, is tacking on another $8.4 million to repeat a link between climate and democracy that we already know is a smart way to spend. Certainly not when Canadians are struggling to pay their bills. This is just the newest entry in Trudeau's rap sheet of using Canadian taxpayer money to stroke his ego. Ahead of the ASEA in conference in 2022, his government suddenly earmarked $333 million for vague Asian projects, funds, and nonprofits to boost his image at the summit. Likewise, each visit to Ukraine saw Trudeau pairing hundreds of millions in aid with a trip, including a puzzling $4 million for gender-inclusive demining in war-torn areas. Trudeau's announcement pledged the $8.4 million climate change study would help protect the human rights of environmental defenders. But how is studying declining democracy actually help on-the-ground activists for real? As usual with Trudeau, the talk never aligns with the walk. He waxes poetic about human rights while snuggling up to dictatorships. Conservatives have repeatedly called out Trudeau's overspending reveals that just happened to match up with his overseas trips. But he keeps on abusing his power as PM to hand out millions without asking Parliament. Another proof that Trudeau supports his ministers in continuing with their culture of spending on useless projects that not a single sane Canadian would benefit from is this disastrous firearms buyback program. And despite all their big talk about getting rid of dangerous guns, the Liberals have already wasted $42 million on a takeaway plan that's stuck in limbo years after they announced it. This huge misuse of taxpayer money just further kills public trust in a government that talks a big game on gun control but consistently flops on making meaningful rules or smart budgets. As conservative Senator Don Plett rightly argued, this is a boondoggle and it hasn't even begun. How can your government have spent $42 million on this when not a single firearm has been bought back? This buyback thing is just the Trudeau liberals endlessly chatting and theorizing about grabbing guns someday. But somehow they burned through tens of millions already studying a takeaway plan that's no closer to happening than when they first pitched it back in 2020. This epic display of fiscal incompetence is sadly typical of the Trudeau liberal government. Let's remember that implementing this buyback was expected to cost between $400 million and $600 million originally. Those projections have now ballooned to an estimated $2 billion or more by some experts, a figure that could easily climb higher given the Liberals' routine budgetary oversights. And for what? The government's own documents estimate a mere 10,000 to 15,000 firearms are in the hands of retailers, while 125,000 to 200,000 are owned by individual license holders. Not exactly insane stats compared to the crazy billions this misguided program would cost. The Liberals have already wasted $42 million on consulting fees and admin costs even though they got no real buyback plan going on. The public paperwork shows them handing IBM a lavish $2.27 million just to design a program that doesn't exist. That crazy high price tag for some initial planning is nearly double what the contract was first worth. On top of that, some 60 bureaucrats are grinding away at Public Safety Canada, plus more teams from the RCMP, Service Canada, and Public Services. Nearly 100 civil servants pulling in sweet taxpayer-funded paychecks to sit around brainstorming about maybe some may taking away private property from legal gun owners who've been vetted. Is this really the best use of our public money? As firearms policy expert Gary Mauser scathingly observed, this amounts to mere grandstanding by the Trudeau government for political optics rather than evidence-based policy. After all, many firearms used criminally are already smuggled illegally from abroad. Why should we expect gang members to line up to hand in their guns during a government amnesty? This crazy expensive effort will barely knit Canada's gun violence rate. Mauser also pointed out provinces like Ontario and Saskatchewan are already refusing to join the next phases of this buyback mess. If big partners bounce, the program's scope will be hobbled, making any theoretical public safety wins even smaller. The Liberals are charging forward with their ideological crusade against legal gun owners while ignoring wiser uses of government resources. Trudeau's hardcore addiction to wasteful spending is bankrupting Canada's future. His fiscal dumpster fire is screwing over generations to come. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Trudeau and Freeland should be convicted for all of our tax money being spent on useless and aimless projects? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. 
You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.